Okay, as promised, I told you we would go through genes, mutations, and anomalies. An anomaly is a situation where something isn't quite like you know, the others. One of these things is not like the other, for those of you who remember your Sesame Street. Um, so the, all the, all the uh, different objectives are here, and this is kind of a tough area to go through very quickly, but I just want to try and keep you up to date on something. So here we go. Uh, we're going to scroll down through the, uh, the terminology. We don't really need to worry too much about that. <clears throat> this is a neat uh, little reading passage on how the mutations that they're finding in uh, skin cancers are s starting to show how cancers actually grow. There's a few questions there. Um, that would help you with the... Uh, the, the regions at the end of the year, especially this one that talks about telomerase, which we've talked about in class before. Okay, So this page right here, get rid of it. It was supposed to be up in the previous genetic stuff. I don't know what shifted it down here, but we're going right to here, mutations. Mutations are generally referred to as just a change in the code, okay? A change in the genetic code. Now, Mutations are not always bad. Unfortunately, we think of mutations as being bad all the time, um, and they're given a, a kind of a bad rap, but they are not always bad. Actually, they are the, the fuel that drives evolution, which is, of course, the next topic that we'll get into. Okay. It is an alteration. It is a change in the DNA sequence, and one change in the DNA sequence puts everything else out of line. It's as if or you're in gym class, excuse me, physical education class, and you're counting off by fours, and you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and about halfway through counting off in your line, um, someone walks in late, and they just kind of jump in line. Well, now everything has shifted a little bit, and that's one of the ways that a mutation can occur. That would actually be called an addition mutation. Um, Somatic mutations are not passed on and they're usually survivable. The word somatic right here, okay, means body-based. So for instance, uh, let's say uh, I'm going to have a child, which I am not, um, and while my uh, wife is pregnant, um, she has an accident and loses a finger. That baby's not going to be born without a finger, okay? And that is, of course, survivable. The ones that are really difficult to uh, predict are the sperm and egg mutations, um, sometimes called the germinal mutation. These are often passed on. They'll be shown in the, pregnant, in the uh, offspring and, and unfortunately many times can do some really bad damage as far as uh, the baby's development is concerned uh, and occasionally even lead to its death. Okay. Different types of chromosome alterations, non-disjunction. This is when the chromosomes fail to separate and you have extra chromosomes. As we've discussed before, um, there are uh, conditions, Down syndrome being uh, probably one of the most prevalent and one of the ones we see most easily, and that is a non-disjunction of a chromosome. That means that a person with Down syndrome actually has more chromosomes than you do. You, of course, have 46. Um, they would have 47. Disjunction is when everything works accurately or, or the way it's supposed to, and all the chromosomes separate. Unfortunately, you can still get mutations even during a normal disjunction. Polyploids are plants or animals or some sort of critter um, that has more than the 2n number of chromosomes. Now in humans, we are two, our 2n number is 46 chromosomes. Um, some species of lettuce could be 94. So chromosome number doesn't really indicate intelligence or capability. Um, and these polyploids are no exception. This is how you get the great big strawberries or the wheat with a lot more seeds per stalk and that sort of thing. Therefore, you're producing more product in a smaller amount of, of space. So a mutation, once again, random change in the genetic material. Okay. Mutagenic agents. Mutation, mutagenic right here. I'm going to try to highlight it. Mutagenic agents are anything that increases the number of mutations. Um, for As far as radiation, if you live near a nuclear plant, okay, you have nuclear leakage. Tanning beds, that's why we're so concerned about limiting the age by which people can go into tanning beds. Um, the sun, you know, that wonderful thing that we see once in a while in northern New York here, um, that is an example of something that can cause mutations. And I know you don't want to hear a bunch of my stories. Lantern mantles, and I sent you a, an article about it the other day. I hope you read it. It's kind of, print, kind of interesting. Um, now, 
I'm not saying that you're going bullhead fishing and having lantern mantles around is going to give you a cancer or a mutation. However, if you read that article, um, they at one time did have a number of carcinogens in them that could possibly give you cancer. They were radioactive, uh, so much in fact that there was a, uh, a, a person that I didn't really care for. And one time I knew he was going over to Canada, so I put about four or five things of lantern mantles under his seat of his car, and when he went through, he set off the radiation detector. I Probably not something I should have done way back then, but I did, and that was my foolish days. Uh, other chemicals, nicotine, tar, formaldehyde, and benzene. Hmm, I wonder where we're going to get those. Those are all present in cigarettes, and we're now finding that many of those chemicals are now in those wonderful jewels and vapes that uh, are, are creeping around. Okay? Examples of how a gene mutation depends on the environment. Pretty soon, um, although it's snowing today, you are going to see your grass start coming up in your lawn. If there is a piece of wood or there is a, a brick or, or, or something, maybe you left a sled or something out in your lawn, um, and all the grass around it greens up, okay? It's very common that you could lift that sled up and the plants underneath would be yellow. They'd still be growing. The grass underneath would still be growing, but it's yellow, okay? Um, and in that instance, that means that the, the sunlight that is not hitting, or that is, well, yeah, that is not hitting the, the grass is unable to make chloroplasts appear, okay? Um, you get a tan, okay? That is the sunlight turning on the melanocytes in your skin. And it clicks them all on, and you get darker skin. Identical twins, okay? Um, there was an old movie with Danny DeVito and Arnold Schwarzenegger called Twins. And they're identical twins born in a secret scientific lab, and they're, uh, they, they're raised in two different environments. One very affluent, and that's, of course, the Arnold Schwarzenegger one, and one not so well, and that was Danny DeVito. It's a pretty funny movie. Okay. I'm not going into to the selective breeding and that sort of stuff today. I'll save that for another... Um, video. I think that's enough for today. Hope everybody's well. Go and wash your hands right now. Remember your social distancing. Keep tracking the numbers like we have all along, um, and I will see you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.